Okay, welcome everyone to BC314 Media and Technology in Ministry. Today is our second lecture this week. We're going to just uh, uh, pick up from where we left yesterday and add a few more ideas and thoughts on to that. Uh, so we're going to do that today. Let's pray together, then we will get started. Could uh, yeah, somebody pray? And then we will proceed. Yeah, Dave may ask you to pray and we can start. Heavenly Father, we come before you. We thank you for this day once again, Lord Jesus. Mm. We thank you that you've given us this opportunity once again to come together and learn all together to, to bring glory to you, Lord Jesus, and to, mm. to lead all your people into your kingdom and um, help us minister more to them, Lord Jesus. We thank you. Uh, help each one of us to understand everything that our pastor is going to teach us, Lord Jesus. In the precious name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. All right. So um, let me go ahead and share the PDFs. <clears throat> Yesterday, um, I was just sharing some thoughts on guidelines for graphics and video. So yeah, these are two main media products, if you will, that you know we, we would be using uh, to communicate with people. And so uh, we went through some guidelines and it's important that as you know as uh, uh, you have people doing work for you um, that you, uh, as a leader, as a pastor, as a leader, that you think from this perspective and also get them to follow some of these guidelines. So we talked about general guidelines, you know, when you're creating graphics, how do you choose colors and fonts and be clear about your message and um, use uh, visual hierarchy uh, to your advantage. Uh, there are some free software packages, some guidelines when you're doing graphic design about the style, about the images that you use, um, fonts and faces that you use. Similarly, when you're working on videos, uh, you know, uh, important, you know, what you're showing in the videos, what kind of songs you're using, and, uh, you know, uh, use the duration of the videos uh, to your advantage. Nowadays, people want smaller, shorter, shorter videos, more impactful videos. So think, along those lines, uh, the voice uh, you, that you use uh, for your videos may keep them relevant, exciting, and other uh, general information, you know, and uh, standardize how you are showing your text in both your graphics and videos, you know, the way you display your month, your dates, your day of the year, the people get used to it, you know, especially the people who are watching, they know, okay, this is how they show the date, the time, the venue, etc right so we went through all this yesterday today i just want to take that same thing uh, the same guidelines uh, extend it a little bit and add some other aspects to it now uh, it's going to be a short class today uh, because uh, we will cover this quite quickly but the idea here is that when you create graphics uh, and videos, uh, you, want, uh, you want them to be searchable and you want them to enhance your website uh, if you're releasing them on your website in terms of searchability as well, right? So, uh, you know, generally people are going to be searching online through some search engines, most likely Google or they may use some other search engines. Uh, so there are simple tricks that are uh, not tricks, but simple practices that uh, we can use when we create graphics and videos uh, to enhance the, so the word SEO simply means search engine optimization. That means you're making your website, you're optimizing your website for search engines so that uh, they get picked up. You know, your, your the particular web page gets picked up for 
certain keywords and phrases. So these are some things you just make it as a as your normal practice, so that uh, when you create graphics, when you create videos, they will be search engine friendly, optimized for search engines. And also, we'll talk a little bit about you know what you what we can do uh, when we post videos. Um, now, most of us would be using YouTube uh, to post our videos. There are of course other other uh, video platforms that could be used, but uh, there are some simple things that we could do to make our uh, videos and graphics uh, searchable even on YouTube. So I'll just cover those things. And then as you know, as opportunities come your way, make use of these ideas, right? So how do we make our graphics and video posts search engine friendly? So one is uh, the text that is used in your graphics or in your video and in the posts that you make or you put out uh, can be search engine friendly, right? So one would be the title of your videos. So when you do a video post, the title, the, the words that you use, right? In the title, of course, it should represent the content. You don't want to mislead people. So if your video is about, uh, you know, youth ministry of your video is about, uh, is, a, is a sermon about uh, healing. Of course, your title is needs to say that. So uh, we are not misleading people. But what we can do is in the title, use words that are search engine friendly. So for example, especially, you know, uh, the last two years uh, during the pandemic, uh, if you're doing a sermon or a, 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 a posting, your live streaming, then in your title for the video, it's very good to use words like live, uh, if it's live, and or online church service. It just makes your video, uh, your your church service video, um, more searchable in that context when if people are looking for a live service or they're looking for an online church service because you know uh, last two years physical or in person services were not happening in many places but if you use the word live online church service in your title of the video post uh, uh, it's going to be not, not only promoted but even when people search it was, you know, the, the chances are higher that that video will be shown. Uh, even on the graphic, you put live, use the word live on the graphic. That also uh, helps improve the visibility of that video. So when you put your cover graphic for the video, you put live. <laughs> You know, so just using these words in your title uh, or in your on the graphic in this context. So like this, you can think about, you know, so when you when you think about your video and your graphic, you think about, hey, how, how, how do I want this searchable? What words must I use? What words would people use when they're searching for which I want this content to be made visible and use that you know, in your in the title of your post. And of course, depending on the platform you're posting, you can use relevant hashtags. So if you're doing a YouTube post, you know, use the hashtag live, hashtag live, hashtag online church service. You know, uh, you can, you know, if you, I think the first 15 tags uh, are, are the ones that are you know, commonly used. The first three are made visible to the public. So, uh, use those hashtags when you're making your post. It increases your visibility of that video. Um, similarly, in the description text, you know, write text, uh, write a description. So, so many times we post a video and we don't write any description. Uh, we are actually losing out on an opportunity when you post a video or an image. Uh, so write text for that video post uh, and don't just say here is a nice video or here i hope you enjoy this sermon you know don't, don't do that 
write a few lines, three or four lines, you know, how, how many lines you can, that describes what that video is about. And in your text, use keywords by which people will search, by which you want that video to be searchable. E example, now, if that sermon is about overcoming anger, you, you use that word. Yeah, this sermon is about overcoming anger. You know, anger is a, you know, a, 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 so, you, know um, you, know, you write a few lines, like, you know, anger is a problem we all face, and here are the keys that will help, help you manage your temper, things like whatever, you know. So, and use words that people would search by, you know. Uh, somebody may search by anger management, you know, or uh, uh, overcoming uh, uh, overcoming uh, anger issues or whatever, you know. So you can find out those keywords and use those keywords in your description so that it increases the visibility of the video or that image post itself. So use make use of the space that is given for description. And also in your description, provide links back to your main website. You know, so sometimes when people come and see it, it's a great opportunity to let them know that, hey, there's more, more things available on your church website or your ministry website, you know. So if you don't do it, uh, you're missing out on, it's a free opportunity, right, for you to let people know about your website. So, uh, when you post, uh, make use of description text because that increases your uh, search engine uh, visibility or optimization of your video or image graphic and provide links back, right? The other things you can do uh, for your image is of course to use good quality images, shouldn't be blurred and so on. Uh, and the file name of your image make that also intelligent and searchable. So, you know, generally when somebody does, you know, work, graphics work, they'll just use a name like image one, image two, image 10, image 11. It's a waste, you're wasting an opportunity. Instead, that image, you give it an intelligent name that, uh, you know, you want it to be searchable by. So. You, the image could be, you know, sermon, anger management, or invitation to Bangalore Church, whatever. And, and you use these dashes in between. It makes that image search engine friendly. So that image will also get picked up uh, in search engines and may even be presented in image searches, right? So just by making sure you use proper file names for your images, you're making your images search engine friendly. And of course, um, for the image, uh, when, 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 uh, when uh, somebody is posting the image, you know, you can again use keywords for your title uh, so that the image may be picked up by uh, Google image search engine, okay? Um, use alternate tags. Uh, so when you're posting the image uh, on your website, you could use uh, alternate tags for that uh, image and put keywords over there. Um, uh, use the right file type. Of course, most of the time we are using uh, JPEG or sometimes GIF or PNG. Uh, use high quality images. And wherever possible, you host your images on your own site. So if you have if you have a website, of course, I'm talking about. If you have a website and you're keeping your keep your images on your website, it adds to the content that's being crawled. And if you do the image well, it's going to increase the search engine visibility of that content or that web page where this image is uh, being used. Of course, it depends that we use, do the right things, like give it a proper file name and use proper keywords on the images and so on. But it'll all add up towards making, you know, things more search engine friendly on your website. Similarly for the videos, 
right? So when you create videos, don't waste the opportunity. Uh, you host the video on the right platform. Now, most of us would use YouTube and we do that. All our videos are actually out on YouTube and then we plug it into our own website or wherever we want it to be uh, made accessible. And then again, do the same things. That is, you know, use a proper title uh, for your video uh, in the description text. Put, you know, put, uh, so pay attention to the title and the description of your video. It's going to help uh, put a thumbnail image that is engaging. Uh, wherever possible, include a video transcript. Uh, um, uh, many times, uh, uh, YouTube would help you generate a video transcript. You know, it just auto, auto generates it for you. Uh, the uh, yeah, so you order. You know, you can order the videos in the way you want it ranked. Um, if you are putting it on a page, make the video the focus of the page. So as soon as people come and they're able to see it. Uh, and then instead of putting the same video out in multiple places, put the video in one place, for example, on YouTube, and then link it out to wherever you want it to be visible, right? Rather than putting the same video many. So what happens is if that same video is visible many places, the number of views on that video increases. Therefore, there's a higher chance of YouTube recommending it to other viewers as well. Right. If you don't do that, instead, if you're putting copies of the video in different places, uh, uh, the number of views are going to be much less on each one of them, and it's you know it, you're losing out on an opportunity. So, put the video in one place, like on YouTube, and then make it visible in wherever else you want it. So all the views are accumulated, making that video more and more uh, visible or rank higher. So these are simple things that we can do uh, when we are uh, putting videos out. Now, uh, just a little bit on um, you know YouTube being the main uh, uh, video uh, sharing platform. Uh, it's uh, th there are of course other platforms, but it's it's useful for us to know a little bit on how YouTube recommends videos. So. You know, uh, all of us have experienced this. You go to watch one video, and then on you know on your right side panel or wherever you know whether you're on the phone or on the computer, you'll have YouTube recommending other videos to you, right? So, how does YouTube do that? It, of course, it's done through software uh, uh, that that you know it's that typically referred to as a recommendation engine. So the software is recommending videos to you. Now, definitely, if we understand a little bit of how that works, uh, we can try to use it to our advantage so that uh, the videos we post could be recommended to other people who might be interested, right? So uh, YouTube, it ranks videos based on, of course, the content, uh, the thumbnail, so what graphic do you use as a thumbnail? So that, that gives YouTube information. Uh, the audio, so uh, the words that are used in the audio, of course, uh, the, the, the recommendation engine knows what it is there. And then again, the title and the description. So all these things, you know, uh, uh, in addition to the video content and in addition to the audio, that is what the message is, the thumbnail you use, thumbnail graphic, the title that you use, the description text, they all add up in determining how we, that video is going to be ranked by YouTube, right? So uh, if we pay attention to, you know, just things that we can, that are in our control, like the title, the description text, and the thumbnail graphic that you use, they are going to help that particular video make it more visible. Now. Uh, um, what YouTube does, basically, it tracks the behavior of every user, right? So um, the user's engagement behavior, 
uh, YouTube is tracking the clicks and the watches. So, oh, this person is you know clicking on these kinds of videos. This person is spending time watching these kinds of videos. So if you watch uh, soccer, you know it knows okay. You know this person likes soccer. It's going to show him more soccer videos. You know things like that. Um, and also by how they respond, the it's tracking the behavior uh, in terms of their response. What do they like? What do they dislike? What do they dismiss? So YouTube is tracking that as well. When I say YouTube, of course, we know it's Google in the back end uh, tracking that. So this is what this is the information that is being used eventually to recommend the right kind of video. And I mean the videos that a particular user would like, right? So if you if you try to put it in in the form of a picture, right? So there's a huge deposit of videos, millions of videos, right? Now YouTube, out of the millions, maybe more, YouTube has to recommend a few videos to you, right? So you and I, we are the end users here, and uh, uh, you know. Uh, you are, we are watching YouTube, I mean, watching videos on our phone or whatever device, but it has to pull out from millions of videos. It has to recommend something, maybe a music video, whatever, worship video, sermon video, whatever. So how does it do, right? So it looks at the history and the context of the user. So, um, so you are the user. What is the history, and what is the context? Right, so okay, this user likes has been watching. So based on these two, you know, data that is kind of collected, based on your clicks, based on your previous watches, uh, based on your likes, your dislikes, your dismissals, it has collected all the data that forms the history and the context, and then it filters out. Okay, for this candidate, I'm going to from the millions, I'm going to pull out hundreds of videos that are ones that I can possibly show this user based on that history and context. But then what will be the final list shown based on ranking? That means this ranking is based on, you know, how some of the work we have done, right, for our videos. And of course, there will be other sources of uh, videos coming in it ranks and then it selects a few, you know, and then starts giving it to this, feeding it to this particular user. Okay, so this ranking happens and there are other inputs on the video features or what does this video uh, uh, contain, etc. And that's recommended. So what can we do? Right? How can we, you know, work with this recommendation engine? Some simple things, you know. Uh, I'm not saying we're going to become, you know, uh, YouTube uh, stars, but there are some basic things we can do, and that's what I want to just share with us. As you prepare your video, you're going to post it on YouTube. You know, uh, make do a keywords research and make sure that. You know, what are the keywords people are searching for, which you could use in your, uh, for your video title, file name, video title, description, video script, right? So use those keywords, in the file name also, in the title, in the description, in the script. Then also use a thumbnail uh, uh, that would help towards a thumbnail graphic that would help like what we have already shared. Uh, use a very compelling title. Uh, so these are simple things, right, that you can think about. Uh, rather than just saying, you know, Sunday sermon for Jan 30th. Okay, fine, we will know it's a Jan 30th, Sunday sermon. But and so just saying Sunday sermon, Jan 30th, if you use a title, you know, uh, that is of course relevant to the sermon, but it is also very compelling and it is keywords. So you could say healing service, or you could say 
supernatural miracle healing and uh, deliverance service right so what you're doing is you're intensely adding a few more words by which uh, people who are interested may be searching you know and uh, if it's a video that is covering all these things you are adding some of those key words to your title which will make that video more searchable rather than just calling it Sunday sermon Jan 20 Jan 30th you're giving some words like miracle and healing deliverance service Sunday Jan 30th so you've added some words that are going to help that video be shown to people who like those kinds of uh, content who like that content and then uh, the other things which we already talked about, proper description, uh, make use of that, make use of tags, um, uh, turn on closed caption. That is very simple. You know, use self-created closed caption. You can turn it on. Um, uh, uh, the other, there are other features in YouTube that you could use. Uh, there are cards. Uh, that you could, you know, you can set up. So for every video, you can create cards, end cards, and uh, cards that come in or end screens that can present other videos that belong to you. So when you're presenting one video, you're actually taking advantage of that to present more videos, you know, of the of of your church or ministry. And you can you use end screens. You know, that is, at once the video is over, as soon as the video is over, you can place a screen, YouTube allows you to do that, where you can then, you know, show the user whatever you feel they should watch next, maybe your next video or do something, right? You can create meaningful playlists of a sermon series. You can include watermarks. Again, you can set this up all in YouTube. And then you can see how, you know, you can check and see how your video is doing. Um, uh, and so on, right? And then, of course, encourage more people to subscribe or to comment, to like. Uh, this will help uh, in the visibility for your video. Um, and uh, so, uh, there, 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 there are several things like these, which um, you know I've just listed here. And more recently, uh, we can create YouTube Shorts, which are short, like thirty-second videos that you can upload. Uh, you can promote your videos across other other social media channels. Okay, uh, you can read through this, and you know um, they, they just help, helpful hints on how you can make content more visible uh, on on uh, YouTube and of course on your website as well. The last thing I want to just uh, bring our attention to before we close off today is uh, uh, is about you know if you're using songs which you know we often do in our church services that are written by uh, uh, Christian artists or uh, other producers who uh, uh, especially if they are international now of course if you're singing some uh, regional language songs and uh, uh, then I don't think this is an issue but if you're using, you know, English songs, especially like if they've been produced by other artists, uh, it's very important to give proper credits and it has to go in the description of the video, right? So example, if you're singing six songs uh, and they are by, you know, these well-known uh, artists and groups, uh, it's important to uh, mention that in, the description otherwise youtube will automatically block out those content for coffee copyright infringement okay so youtube will, you know the, the youtube engine is, is is going through the video content it's it the engine recognizes songs it will check online or oh, this is you know a copyrighted song it's a song belonging to hill song or whatever the band it is is there an acknowledgement of its use you know, are the credits given in the description? So this is how you should write. And just given one example of a song. So suppose we are singing the song, Raise a Hallelujah. And you're singing it in church. Of course, it's it will be part of your video. You're live streaming your service. But 
if you don't want YouTube to block it out due to copyright infringement, then you provide this credit. You know, who was the artist, which album, who was it li uh, licensed to, I mean, the producer. So you put it, so then YouTube will not block out your content, especially in regions. So you may see it in your country because uh, let's say in India, uh, we may be able to see it because there is no copyright infringement as far as India is concerned. But in countries where, example, North America or Australia or other countries, where copyright infringement is possible, it will block out the video. So your video will not be visible in those parts of the world because of this. And there is no credit given. So this is a simple thing, but it's an important thing if you are singing songs um, that are used by, uh, that are copyrighted songs, right? So then just make sure you give credit so that your video is not blocked. Otherwise, whatever content you've put will get blocked by YouTube because of copyright infringement. Okay, so that's it. I just wanted to share these thoughts, um, practical things on basically on graphics and videos, uh, what you use in your own website, what you use out there on social media. And these are all things just to keep in mind uh, so that the effort we put in will actually be picked up by these search engines because ultimately that's how people are gonna land on our web page or on the videos that we put out, um, that they will, you know, they will be more visible and then of course be a blessing to people. So I'm gonna stop here and see if there are any questions, any things you want me to clarify. Um, uh, next week, uh, I was thinking we would uh, cover social media platforms, which is not too much. Uh, I mean, in the sense we're all familiar with it, but just touch on it and then move from then on, move into equipment. Uh, we talk about, uh, you know, the different things that we need to do <clears throat> when we're using, you know, uh, for our ministries. We, of course, use a lot of equipment, whether it's your public address system, your um, making of videos, graphics, uh, producing uh, videos, uh, producing documentaries, live stream, sound equipment, so on, just to share, you know, these things. So at least as a leader, you have something in mind so that when people come and talk to you, uh, you know, okay, what they are talking about and how to make decisions because they will be looking to you to make decisions. Any questions on uh, graphics and video guidelines of, that we have covered yesterday and today? Is that clear? Seems like every, everyone, you all understood what we're talking about. Okay. All right, um, so make use of these things. Uh, I, I see your comments in the chat, thank you. Uh, so make use of these things in your churches, ministries, as you do work and uh, may it be a blessing to many others, okay? So we will wrap up for today. I know it was a short class, but uh, I just wanted to share this, this, this aspect of uh, making graphics and videos searchable and uh, it'll be helpful. Okay, so we're gonna close in prayer and then dismiss. Um, um, Conan, could you close in prayer, please? If your mic is okay, or... Okay. Prince, why don't you pray and we yes. will discuss. Thank you. Thank you, Father. Thank you in this time, Lord. You helped us to learn you uh, in this subject. Uh, whatever we learn, Lord, help us to uh, use in our ministry that in the modern days that we will uh, apply all these things to uh, reach to people. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you for that. I also mm, pray that your blessing all the day with us, Lord. Thank you. I submit.
in everything in your head. In the name of the Lord, I pray. Amen. 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 Okay. Thank you, everybody. Uh, enjoy the rest of your day. Enjoy the weekend. I'll see you all again next week. Thank you and God bless. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Roman. Thank you.